Hey YouTube. So big news. The third book is out. The second in the Phantom Lock series as well. It's I finally got my copies. There it is in all its glory. I'm I'm really, really happy with how the, the title the title and the, uh, the the cover came out. I mean, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? It's just the design is great and the printing came out really well. I cannot be happier with this thing. And now this is my third book and the sequel to Phantom Lock the Lost. It is part of my Phantom Lock Urban Fantasy series which follows a man named Kurt Roberts. He's a psychic that when he touches things he sees past images in his mind and the more violent the events the more uh, intense the vision. So he uses this gift to help the Chicago Police Department solve paranormal cases. So I want to try to sell you on this. I want to try to get you interested. Now you don't have to go get the book right away. In fact you can go to my website and check out the first two chapters of Phantom Lock the Lost. But I'm going to do you even more of a solid. I'm going to read uh, the first two chapters out of this book. Now there's no spoilers for the, the first in the series. The, the, the first two chapters have nothing to do with what happened in the, in the previous one. But you can think of it as a teaser. And bear with me, I've been sick for the past couple of days. I my voice has come back, but I still have a cough every now and then, and I, 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 so I got to drink for myself too, since I don't get too hoarse. But here we go. This is from Phantom Walk, Phantom Fall. Rays of sunlight reflected off the moon and onto a long country bound railroad. Couplings began the routine of rocking and rattling, allowing a lime green terrain safe passage. Venturing through a dense forest, these carriages carried an abundance of passengers with untold number and lineage. A few protruding branches caressed the moon's light, covering the long transport or blanket of shadows. Through a window within one of these carriages, a man looked to the night with his orange iris, admiring the view's simplicity and lack of grandeur. Two empty seats, a leg length, a leg's length in front of him, and another to his left, the man sat comfortably in a small cabin, opposite of the large window from which he relaxed, so to slide any door. This entrance had a large window had a, had a window large enough for someone to look in from the outside hallway. Euphilus cradled his features well with a marbled face to peak smoothness. Luscious, short, dark brown hair protrude from his skull cap. Each hair carried a scent of floral hair gel. Each strand reached at an angle towards the ceiling. Above the man's chin, a firm set of pink lips with pearly white teeth locked behind a closed mouth. His muscular form, hidden behind a plain gray t-shirt, paired with flated, faded blue jeans, often tapping his foot to the beat of the railroad tracks, trying to match each passing moment with the fall of orange and white tennis shoes. Sliding open, the door made a distinct swoosh sound as it allowed another to enter the room. Taking a seat, this new occupant, a nicely dressed balding man, his dark blue suit and white shirt, although adequately, adequately ironed, failed to hide his overweight frame. Releasing a deep sigh, the suited man loosened his tie, allowing the business noose to hang free. Looking up, noticing the young man for the first time. I'm sorry, is this seat taken? He asked with fatigue clinging to his voice. The young man shook his head. No, it's all yours. The suited man nodded. Thank you, I, I appreciate it. Couldn't stay in the other carriage too much longer. That mother and her spoiled three-year-old son were driving me crazy. The young man smiled, returning silently to the window. Ignoring the young man's cone of silence, the suited man continued to draw out the conversation. My name's Stephen he said, reaching out with a sweaty hand. The young man clasped Stephen's hand and shook it moderately. Jeremy. Releasing his grip, Jeremy released into, reached into his right pocket, pulling out a pocket watch. Attached to his sleep chain, the outside had a grim silver shell. In the middle of the front side was a portrait of a fox. 
Drawn from the shoulders, the pristine animal's gaze remained bound left. Her ears peered to a beautiful point. Circling the wilderness bound animal's portrait was an engraved vine pattern, waving in and out of itself. Stephen looked at the pocket watch and then back to Jeremy. Are you traveling because of business? <coughs> Probably to open the pocket watch, Jeremy held the front nonchalantly towards Stephen, keeping the inner workings hidden behind the box. Observing his watch for a moment and then returning his attention back to Stephen. Something like that, Jeremy responded. Me too. My, my job takes me all over the country. Government work, you see. It's interesting having numerous amounts of places to visit, bosses to answer to. I know how you feel. My responsibilities take me all over the... Hi, how are you? Come on, let's read. Let's read. Come here. Come here. Good girl. Bosses to answer to. I know how you feel. My responsibilities take me all over the world. Although, I have only one boss whom I've actually never met. Jimmy said, glancing down at the pad his pocket watch once more before snapping it shut and returning its... Return it to its resting place. Really? All over the world? That's awesome. Stephen leaned back a little. A look of curiosity painted on his face. How do you and your boss communicate? I've never met him. Email? Telephone? Pager? Cracking with a smile, Jeremy responded. None of the, ab the above. I just... From day one, I knew how to do my job very well. So it's never been necessary for me to communicate with my boss. I'm sure they're pleased. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been allowed to continue on for so long. I don't mean to pry, but you look so young. I guess you're older than 25. How long have you been employed? Long enough, I suppose, Jeremy said, shifting in his seat. What is it exactly that you do? I'm an accountant. Kind of boring. Well, like I said, I travel all over the world. Meet a lot of people. Sort of difficult to explain. Do you enjoy your job? Stephen asked softly. Jeremy sat still, the question of the question a stranger to his ear, looking to the floor, the answer rolling around in his head. It's like any job, really. Some days are decent, others really suck. I, I enjoy it when everything ends peacefully, but a lot of times I don't always get that option. Stephen nodded, staring at a curious device at the curious device in Jeremy's hands. You've got a really unique pocket watch. I don't think I've ever seen someone your age carry one before. Jeremy shrugged. I've had the damn thing for as long as I can remember. It's pretty old. Uh, older than me, most likely. Who drew the fox portrait? Jeremy thought for a moment, his hand retreating to the, his, the pocket, retrieved to his pocket to fiddle with the device. No clue. How does your girlfriend feel about all this traveling? Jeremy cocked an eyebrow, cocked a curious eyebrow. I've never had a girlfriend, never been married either. Stephen shot Jeremy a shock, a look of shock. You're shitting me, a good looking guy like you? Jeremy shrugged. Guess so, what about you? Married, divorced, he confirmed. Long hours were just too much on the relationship. Jeremy again brought out his pocket watch, opening it once more. Any kids? Stephen nodded. We had got a daughter together. Her name was Emily. She'll be five in September. A guard expression of guilt fell upon Jeremy's face, glancing back up to his pocket watch, his orange eyes studying it carefully. I'm sorry, he said heavily, shutting the device. What do you mean? Stephen asked, puzzled. Well, I'm sure it's not easy for you, easy with the joint custody and being on the road all the time. Stephen nodded. The ex and I make it work for the most part. The two men sat quietly for a few minutes, Jeremy returning his attention to the window as he gently tapped the silhouette of his pocket watch. Just in his shirt, Jeremy stood up and walked to the sliding door. Pulling it open, pausing mid-frame, he looked back at Stephen. Going to the bathroom? asked Stephen. Jeremy nodded softly. Yeah, I'll um, see you in a bit. With his lie released, Jeremy stepped over the threshold and into the hallway. Pulling out the pocket watch, he cradled the device in his palm. Pushing a button on the side, to spring it open. It's chapter two. What's gonna happen? 
Countless hours pass as Jeremy ventured through the halls of each carriage, keeping his pocket watch open as he passed by every passenger's room. The device mimicking the facade of an oyster without a magnificent pearl, but instead something more. Jeremy saw men, women, and children, individuals of all ages and races, taking the time to observe every single one of them, facing the fox towards their dwelling. Jeremy spent hours making his rounds, the pocket watch's only companion. Walking, he would whisper words of untold incantations, keeping them hidden beneath his breath when coming upon certain carriages. Others, he would remain silent. Returning to his pocket watch, moving on to the next carriage, Jeremy hoped Stephen wouldn't come looking for him. Jeremy's purpose and extended leave would be complicated to explain at best. A little girl, no older than six, waved to him as he walked by. Waving back, he smiled at her. Looking to his pocket watch, the temptation to breathe another whisper, another incantation, drilled deep within his very core. Moving past the girl's carriage, he remained silent. With the last carriage welcoming his company, Jeremy let out a loud swig of air, cradling his elbows between his fingers. Grasping the pocket watch close. Clasping the pocket watch closed, he observed the fox portrait, having done so many times. Jeremy's face remained stern and dutiful as he slid the pocket watch back into his right pocket. Glancing around to make sure he didn't have an audience, Jeremy lowered himself to the floor. Planted an ear to the carpet, he closed his eyes and listened carefully. Patiently counting each track passing underneath the wheels of the train, he relaxed his body. Cleansing moisture seeped out of his pores, dripping quietly to the floor. Counting down from seven, his eyelids flew open upon reaching one. Moving swiftly towards the conductor's cabin, Jeremy's footfall, footfalls fell hard onto the cabin, onto the carpet. Stopping short of the second carriage, Jeremy looked over into the protective railing at the metal connection between the carriages. Studying the bolts, joints, and appendages, he wondered. He whispered softly another incantation. Swinging one leg over the railing, followed by the other. Jeremy held tightly onto the bars with his right arm. Lowering himself down to the attachment mere inches away from the tracks, the breeze hollering ferociously, ferociously through his eardrums as the force of, of the wind tugged at him. Wincing in discomfort, he didn't stray from his intentions. Halting midway as he reached for the link, Jeremy's mid-mind drifted to Stephen, his five-year-old daughter. Closing his eyes, breathing an apology, the decree of his regret lost within the loud trailing of the tracks. Any further words overcome by the terrible sound of colliding metal. Every soul in the train cried out all at once for a middle millisecond, becoming silent as the bellows of the metal carriages hurled through the air, as the train flew off the rails and crashed. So, Phantom Lock, Phantom Fall is available on Amazon on ebook and paperback. If you haven't read the first in the series, I've heard it's good. Maybe check it out. You can read the first two chapters on my website. Yes, you can. Um, anyway, anybody who's already read Phantom Lock the Loss or Revolving Doors, I want to thank you so much for for your support and uh, for I want to thank my parents, my friends, my family the rest of my family for being so caring and understanding and supportive it's it's been a long journey and i'm excited to move on to what's coming next phantom lock phantom fall check it out